I'm Peter McGregor, I'm um, a beef farmer. So where we are in Wensleydale, we have a few flat areas, but a lot of it's very hilly and very, very difficult. Well, we started pasture cropping um, oh, three or four years ago now, and um, we predominantly started to do it through uh, trying to get extra feed over the summer months. What happened at the first year when we tried the pasture cropping over the summer months, it was pretty much a failure because we just didn't have the rain to, to get the cereals up and running at that time of year. So I then had the idea, well, let's plant it in autumn when we normally plant um, our pastures and everything. So what I did then, we just got some cereals. In our case, it was oats. We, I sowed them in um, April, late April. To sow it, um, we just give it a light spray of spray seed and that just sickens the um, existing pasture, the rise and the clovers, but it won't kill them and gives the, um, the cereals a chance to emerge. And by the time your cereals are up one or two inches out of the ground, your, 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 um, your normal pasture or your existing pasture is coming back. In about six weeks time after sowing, um, you've got pasture and a little bit of uh, cereal to go with it. And the best use for pasture cropping in our area now is to get elevated feed. Instead of having your pasture this high, you've got your pasture there and then you've got all this extra feed up, up this high. You can almost um, double your dry matter uh, per given acre. So we found that's way more successful than trying to grow it in the summer. This year we had about two full grazers with, with our cattle and um, their calves at foot. So that's roughly about 70, 75 head of cattle on a, um, it's a four hectare paddock. About every six weeks you can put them on again. Well, you just, you just, graze, you just graze your paddocks as you would normally graze them. And um, then you lock them up uh, late spring for your summer harvest. Last year we got, yeah, eight tonnes of the to hectare uh, of silage, where we would normally get about four and a half to five. That was, that was a huge success. And then, like, you just carry on as you, you normally do. You just, every time you take hay, obviously, you, you've got to re replace your fertiliser, so you're doing that anyway. You just, the next year, you sow in the cereal. If you, if you wanted to top dress the, the pasture, which we did, this time, we, we just put a little top dressing the same time that I, I drilled in the, um, the oats. So I do that with a seed drill, an old combine that I converted. Um, it's got pretty solid tines on it so you can drill the oats in a little bit deeper. You're not cultivating or you're not disturbing the ground at all. So um, you've really got to get a strong machine to drill it into um, virgin pasture. Um, and I found that just works a treat. When I first started doing it, um, we used to sell them at 11 inch rows, but I've brought that back into nine inches and I found that's a good balance. Um, because if you, if you tried to sow it like six or four inch rows, you would just shade out your pasture and you would only get a, a crop of oats, which is not what we're after. So I found that nine inch rows are around about the um, a good all-rounder and you don't choke out your, your normal pasture and, and, you, and you get your extra feed. All in all it's, it's like it's about an extra $50 a hectare to get almost double your feed. I found that's the beauty of the spray seed. If you get your, if you get your um, ratio right, not too strong, you can wipe out all your soft leaves like your fog grasses and um, even barley grass, believe it or not, you can actually get rid of that um, because it's got a soft leaf and, and your rise and your clovers tend to survive, which is a great advantage. I haven't seen any health issues with animals. I've found the best, the best uh, remedy for sick, <laughs> sick animals or keeping healthy animals is just keep them fed up. Um, as soon as you start your animals get hungry, that's when you get in trouble. And um, if the pasture cropping can help that, then it's probably, that's another advantage, yeah. Well, this year, with this Lucerne paddock, 
We've got lucerne in there now. It's a little bit sparse, but it's not too bad. And um, we might try sowing in some red wheat over the summer and try and get some vegetative um, feed over the summer, yeah. Well, the main thing about the pasture cropping for me is grazing your animals as you normally would on a normal pasture. With the extra feed, you would be getting um, right 20 or 30% more feed um, over the winter months, so you're just grazing normally. And then come harvest time, you, uh, you'll get um, almost double your feed for your hay or silage. Yeah. And that's hugely successful for us, the way we, we farm our animals. Oh, I just love it. Just love I just, it. It's just successful for me. Yeah. Yeah.